All right, guys, it's looking like I made a pretty bad call here. We're headed off of the uh, fish camp on South Padre Island over to to do zone three or zone C, if you don't like uh, numbers, of uh, the Arroyo, Colorado. Sun was bright and shiny on the, on the island, and now we're headed into darkness. So we'll see how it goes. We might have to sit at the park and wait it out. Make sure that you go to the story on Adolf Tome Park. That's where we're leaving out of and launching from. And so uh, make sure you check that out because that's got the details on launch point. All right, guys, while we're waiting for the weather to clear here at Adolf Tome Park here on the Arroyo, Colorado, I rarely do my job as far as putting out some good plugs about products and things I like but I've got some time while I'm waiting for this weather to figure out what it's going to do here at the park. I want to show you a couple of things that I think are pretty darn critical to uh, success uh, for me and what I've discovered here uh, fly fishing in the lower Laguna Madre and really this first thing is as a photographer of 35 years. This box, the Yeti I think they call it the loadout. This right here, this is an awesome box. I've had all kinds of boxes, whether it's uh, you know the, the very expensive ones and bags and all that. This box, when I travel heavy, this is the box I have right here. This guy right here. They started making them in different sizes, but the Yeti loadouts, um, great, great. Um, latches on there lightweight to begin with unlike the other uh, cases you see by pelican they start off fairly heavy um, this is not to jump on run you know stand on and cast off of but it's really a pretty darn good box and they come in different sizes now go to yeti.com get you one of these if you're a photographer or if you need something that's watertight and uh just really manageable so I think what they did right on this one is they got the size right so that's pretty cool this guy now one other thing this is my own thing let me go grab it off the skiff I always leave it on there and because this is my product you know I promoted it pretty well compared to everything else that I've talked to you about today fly line mats man this thing, these things are selling like hotcakes. We're headed into spring, so Florida's really getting on these. I appreciate it, Florida. Shout out to you, Florida, Florida men, women, and fly fishers, whatever you are. <laughs> Florida, I love you, baby. These guys are selling like hotcakes, and uh, it's a, it's this one's called the Clint. It is six by thirty-six inches. The longest mat most practical mat you'll see photos if you follow me on um, instagram you'll see photos of these from different people who bought them i've sold them in, on three three continents now good stuff made by me sold by me and backed up by me so you can't go wrong with the fly line mats go to www.texasflycaster.com for that so anyway we were on the island earlier and uh at the home base at the fish camp south and sun was shining bright everything was great started heading inland it's about 35 miles to here from the beach south padre island is the beach and uh the weather changed on me the wind's still not high though so i'm gonna i might just try and launch the drone and see if uh, we can get a shot of this place and the other other launch compared to yesterday i was just here shooting the video and you'll see there's a link in the bottom about it off to may park there was nobody here yesterday there's boats here today there's a lot of uh trailers here already and i think it's because well it rained a lot i know it did that so i don't know what's motivating these guys on a wednesday to be here but or tuesday i'm sorry tuesday to be here but um they're here so we're going to get out, look at zone three of the Arroyo, Colorado. Probably have to dodge some weather and some wind, but uh, let's go for a ride. All right, guys, launching here at Adolf Tome Park. And there's the aerial. So now you get an idea of what the ramps look like. There's a fish cleaning station. There's all kinds of great facilities at this park. Um, and of course, you can rent sp spaces too. There's probably a waiting list because there's not a whole lot of spaces here. This is a county park. This is not a state park. 
so this is the drone shot from directly above, maybe a little bit upriver, from the boat launch that I took while I was waiting for the weather to clear. The story on Adolf Tome Park is not out yet. It'll be a short story just highlighting the park. Great facilities, um, very clean, very new, lighted piers at night, the whole nine yards. None of this was here when I was growing up down here, so it's uh, it's really neat. And uh, here's a kind of like a 360 go around on this, so you can see exactly where we are in relation. And there is the Lower Laguna Madre that way. All right, guys, based on two things, one, what I'm seeing as far as weather, and number two is La Migra went that away with their airboats, very, very loud. We're gonna stay out of that, let them stir that up, get back off their practice round or whatever they're doing. So that's one thing. And then the weather, I'm looking at the radar, it's coming from that direction. So we're gonna go that direction and meet the weather and then, and then fight our way back. In zone three, Arroyo, Colorado, don't forget your PFD. I don't care what kind you wear, just wear one when you're going somewhere you've never been before. If I do, you can. Plus, these guys right here, man, they're non-intrusive. So, wear a PFD. Have your throw ready. Just be ready for anything. Because uh, there's not any anything to run into hardly unless the wind has blown trees into the river, which is entirely possible. It's starting to rain, people. I'm going to put this camera away, and we're going to go. All right, guys. This is Tuesday. We had high winds two days ago on Sunday and here is why you wear your PFD people let me show you why you wear a PFD that is free free floating right now in the Royal Colorado so wear a PFD people and think about that at night you'll never see it PFD people PFD Okay guys, so I've only got a couple of days left here on the uh, fish camp south. So I'm gonna prospect with a gold spoon, which is the best thing ever invented for salt water. And then if I get some hits, I'm on my honey hole right here, my sweet spot. And we'll put that on the map with a big red circle on it. Man, it's a good spot normally. I, I got blanked here though the other day. So I'm up actually in zone two, but um, I had to get a reach up here and then we'll start working our way back through town and hitting some elements that I see like where water's draining in and stuff like that and then there's a bunch of great information from Larry Haynes on that second interview of Larry Haynes just check the timeline in the description and hit the timeline for the Larry Haynes thing and it'll, he will tell you about um, why and where the uh, fish are here in the Arroyo, Colorado. I'm sorry for the wind, guys, and I'm trying to block it as much as I can, but I don't want to mic up because it's about to rain, too, <laughs> along with everything else. All right, guys, the rain did come, so we've got some here. I'm going to hunker down, and we're going to try to stay out of the rain and uh, fish a little in the rain. All right, guys, a little bit of prospecting going on here. Let's see what we got. I got no clue. Big fat zero. Oh, Maybe a ladyfish, who knows? It's not a good fight, whatever it is. Oh, that's a good. Ah. Woo! I think that's a good speckled trout on a gold spoon. Let's see what we got. It's a good fight. Hard to tell what it is. Oh, that's a nice speck. That's a nice speckled trout. Let me show him to you if I can get him in. That guy's taking it. Man, right in the rain too, so. Huh, how about that? He's so nice, he's giving me a challenge on my spinning rod I was prospecting with. out of the way here this is gonna be a fiasco trying to land this guy so he is really 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 got some 
backbone, dude. Maybe I'm fighting him wrong. I don't know how to use a spinning rod anyway. <laughs> And I got, you know, I don't know how to tie these knots either, so anything can happen. I'm making all my excuses before I get in here. He is not tired at all. Woo! Right, he's probably 10 inches long. <laughs> Freshwater trout size. <laughs> okay. Oh, going around the boat again. I want to get him up this time. I'm, I'm kind of like, oh man, this is pretty interesting fight here. Maybe he's not a trout. I've never seen anything quite like this with a trout. <coughs> well, that's because it's a redfish. <laughs> no wonder. No. Dang, I can't tell what I'm looking at. This is a trout, he's just monster size. Oh. <laughs> this is crazy, man. You're gonna not you're not gonna believe this, people, on a prospect. Yeah. This is the Royal Colorado fish here. Ah, here we go. I can use my gloves, I can probably hold on to them, you know, they're pretty slimy guys. He is over slot for sure. Slot out here right now is I think 17, 18, 24. This guy's gotta be pushing. I don't know. Big. We're measuring right over here. Got my measuring right here. Okay. I think you'll understand why it took me so long to get him in. Oh, yep, he is quite the fish, for sure. Whoa, all right guys, there it is. That is the biggest speckled trout I've ever caught uh, on a conventional rod. And uh, <laughs> look at that guy, he's a monster. So that, that's, my arm is 29 inches long. So I'm guessing he's about 28, about the size of that snook I caught the other night. Man, eh, 26. Let's take a look. Twenty-four. I'm just Mr. Overestimator here. There we go. So we know they're in here. So now we go back in with a fly and see what we can do. Slow, slow today. That's the word. Beautiful. All right. Done. Excellent. 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 Wow, that was a mess, wasn't it? Yeah, so whether you're working a fly rod or you're working conventional, hey, by the way, another good plug here. Florida fishing products, reels, pretty awesome. Get yourself one of those and you will not be disappointed. Um, if you don't use it, <laughs> I, mean, I don't know how much you use it. Maybe this is sacrilege, I don't know. But anyway, what you want to do is keep yourself a certain distance off the shore. I'm just drifting with a slight breeze. I'm out of the big wind right now and uh, vary your speeds and fan your cast out so you can cover from, and in this case, we're covering from uh, the shoreline, which we're running parallel to diagonally, but you can cover out to and into the channel, which is a pretty quick drop off here in the Royal Colorado, and you gotta figure out just where they are within that. I've only caught one now and it was prospecting, so I'm probably gonna prospect a little bit more before we uh, switch to fly, because the wind is just coming and going pretty good. All right, guys, let me tell you a couple things. Um, I'm still prospecting because I need more than one fish to say it's a pattern and I can sit on it with a fly rod. So I haven't gotten more than one fish, but what you can do when you come back is there's a map. The map has where I caught that one 24 inch speck. You don't have to prospect, you just come to that spot. Um, it's April, end of April, and uh, you know that the fish have been caught there, so there's no prospecting needed. So I'm gonna go prospect some more, across the way, across the river, the arroyo right over there. I like the trees hanging over and stuff like that. 
and then I'm gonna move start moving and moving and moving because time is running out people I'm running out of time that fish I caught was between I'd say 10 and 20 yards offshore it's the end of April 2023 water temperatures are fine weather's fine we got storms coming but um, they're isolated so that's the dynamics of the situation the variables if you will so I also want to show you one other thing, and that is whenever you see anomalies, anomalies is a fancy word for changes or junk. <laughs> whenever you see anomalies on the shoreline that reach down into the water, pay attention to those because that can be changes in structure. Just like you think about fresh water, this is how we think about salt water, like right there. So if you look right over there, there's some, somebody, Put that in there and it's not that's not there for erosion or anything like that that's there because somebody wanted some structure in there to uh maybe draw some fish in and then you see those little spots all along the shore you just got to keep your eyes open for them this is all stuff you can do in a kayak from town you know or from the the launch in town man i'm seeing a lot of bait coming up all right i'm gonna stop talking and start casting All right guys, so the one problem you might run into if you're like me and you don't throw a spinning rod a whole lot is your arm will get fatigued pretty quickly because you're using a whole different set of muscles than you do when you are throwing a fly rod. So my prospecting days are almost over. We're gonna go down to the very end now. It looks like the weather's all gone past us. Gonna go down to the very end and look at this one spot that's totally sheltered very close to the mouth of Royal Colorado where it flows out into the lower Laguna Madre, my favorite place so far that I can get to. <laughs> guys we're going to handheld and i hope the microphone works if it doesn't i'll just put in some <laughs> overdub i want to show you how this little area between two two water bodies the Roy colorado and the bay over there um, form what is a lot like a freshwater river setup so if you look i don't know if you can see it very well the current's coming right through here and then if you look see that current right there let me just put the camera on that look right there right in there current current and it's running that away i'm in a big shelf right here so that's a big shelf right there and then the current runs on through i wish it was omnidirectional mic you probably didn't hear a thing i said we'll see if we can fix that but anyway as you run on through this pathway this passageway lots of current today lots and lots of current and it goes that way right there so it runs right through there that tells me that uh, this is an incoming tide if i'm not mistaken and the bay is just right over there if i had the drone if the wind one if i had the drone and the wind one blowing so bad i'd show you the bay is just right over there This is just one of this is just one of those places right off the Arroyo, at the very end of the line, down near the mouth of the Arroyo. You know, the only decision you have to make as you go out into the bay from the Arroyo, Colorado, is whether to go left or right, because there's fish. <laughs> no matter which direction you go, it's that healthy down here. But anyway, I just wanted to show you this kind of how it looks like a real freshwater river setup with the with the flow, the current, the eddies, and everything else. Whew. All right, boys and girls, this is the end of the show. We're going to pick up the trolling motor and fly on out of here as quick as we can because we got weather coming. 
Uh, finally, it looks like the weather's looking serious, and uh, we're gonna get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. Like and subscribe. Texas Flycaster. What a wild ride, huh? doesn't go on forever and the party does end my friends this is the end of the arroyo colorado for now i left a lot on the table i've got the maps to show you where to go i've done the prospecting on it i've been here before off the record so this should be something that you guys can zero in on pretty quick based on the maps and start catching fish as soon as you walk in paddle in or <laughs> or boat in the uh the thing is is what i left on the table was night fishing on the boat and on the on the piers the the docks here um they're well lit people are very nice generally and uh they are curious about fly fishing you can get on one end or the other and fly fish at night off of here and usually catch speckled trout without much problem um today the weather was a factor i would still be out there if it wasn't for the threat of weather um, guys like and subscribe to the youtube channel i can't say that enough times uh, we're getting pretty close we're over 3,000 subscribers we need to get probably i don't know 10,000, something like that so i can do this more and more and more anyway thanks for watching that's it from roy colorado that was zone three um and we'll come back in the summer when it's even better and uh, do some nighttime fishing and some other things. Maybe in the, I'll say we'll come back in the summer. We'll try to get here in the summer or we'll get here in September. Talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching. Get ready for the next episode. If the weather holds, we're going to go to uh, Fort Mansfield tomorrow. And that will be the end of the road. It does not go on forever. <laughs>